So as we'll see in much more detail, the way that our body synthesizes proteins is quite different than the way that we synthesize proteins in the lab. For instance, in our body, ribosomes build proteins by beginning at the terminal amino end and ending at the terminal carboxyl end. But in the laboratory, we begin building proteins at the terminal carboxyl end and we move backwards towards that terminal amino end. So we build proteins in the opposite direction to how the proteins are built inside our cells. Now, how does this procedure actually work and how do we build these proteins in a laboratory setting? So in this lecture, we're going to discuss the solid phase method of building proteins in the lab. So what exactly is the major points of the solid phase method? Well, there are two important points. Point number one is we begin at the amino acid that is at the terminal carboxyl end. And we take this amino acid and we attach it onto a solid surface. We basically anchor our amino acid on that solid surface. And we continually attach amino acids one at a time. And that entire growing polypeptide chain is attached onto a solid surface. And that's to keep that protein, the polypeptide, from actually being uh, being washed away because as we add each amino acid, we essentially wash our solution to basically remove all the unwanted things from that solution. And so we want to anchor that growing polypeptide and keep it in place. Now, the second important point of the solid phase method is we have to use different types of molecules activating and blocking agents to basically promote that particular reaction, the formation, the peptide bond that we actually want to form. So in step number one, in order to promote and increase the specificity of the reaction and decrease the number of unwanted products from actually forming, we have to use these different types of molecules to direct the correct synthesis of the protein. Because remember, in any given amino acid, we have different types of groups and these different types of groups react in different ways. And so we can have a variety of different types of competing reactions and competing products. And to basically minimize these unwanted products, we have to use two important agents. One of them is DCC, and that's an activating agent, and it activates the carbon atom on the carboxyl group of the amino acid. So D stands for di, C stands for cyclohexyl, and the second C stands for carbodiamide. And the blocking agent that we're going to use that essentially attaches and blocks the nitrogen on the amino group of that amino acid is TBOC and B stands for butyl, O stands for oxy and C stands for carbonyl. So we have DCC and TBOC that must be used in this method to basically prevent different types of competing reactions and competing products from actually forming. So in step number one, what we want to do is we want to prepare these amino acids. So by reacting our amino acids, so this molecule here, with DCC, we're forming this attachment and that activates this carbon. And we'll see why that's important in just a moment. And by reacting that same amino acid with TBOC, we're essentially adding this entire component onto the nitrogen and that blocks and deactivates this nitrogen. What that means is this nitrogen no longer forms peptide bonds, but this carbon becomes much more likely to form peptide bonds and that will become important in just a moment. So once we prepare our amino acids, let's go to step number two. In step number two, we actually want to take that first amino acid in line 
from the terminal carboxyla and, and attach it onto that solid surface. So in step two, an amino acid that has been protected at the amino group by TBOC is attached onto a solid surface. And this will be the amino acid found on the terminal carboxyl end of that growing polypeptide chain. So this is our group that will be attached onto the solid surface that will react with the carbon of the carboxyl group of this amino acid number one, or let's call it amino acid number N, assuming that we have N number of amino acid in that eventual polypeptide chain. And notice we block our nitrogen because we don't want this nitrogen to form any bonds with this molecule. We only want to form a bond with this carbon here. And so by reacting these two groups, we essentially form the following molecule. So now we have the initial amino acid at the terminal carboxyl end that is attached onto that solid surface. And now we anchor our molecule in place. And so as we continually add our amino acids, as we'll see in just a moment, this growing polypeptide chain will essentially remain anchored onto this solid surface surface and so we can easily wash our polypeptide many many times over and that polypeptide will not be washed away because it will be physically attached onto that solid surface. Now let's move on to step three. In step three we basically want to remove the t bar group before we actually want to add this molecule and form that peptide bond between this amino acid and this amino acid here. So next in step, in, uh, step three we deprotect the nitrogen by removing our t bar and we mix this molecule with a dilute acid. So for example, we have uh, trifluoroacetic acid, so CF3COOH. If we mix this with this molecule, we essentially remove our T bar uh, group. And so what that does is now in step four, if we mix this molecule here with this molecule here, this carbon will be activated to form a peptide bond by the DCC molecule. And because this nitrogen will be missing that T bond group, it will be very likely to form that peptide bond. And this nitrogen, because we still have the T bond attached here, it will not be reactive at all. And so in step four, the activated amino acid that is also blocked by that T box, so the molecule we formed in step number one, is then mixed with amino acid attached onto that solid surface that we formed in step three. And this forms a peptide bond. So in this diagram, we take this molecule here and we mix it with this amino acid attached onto our solid surface as shown and we form a peptide bond between this carbon here, so this carbon right over here and this nitrogen right over here. And notice that this oxygen is actually lost and that's because we also form a molecule known as di uh, dicyclohexylurea. And so what happens is this entire molecule is essentially broken off to form this stabilized molecule that is resonance stabilized between this nitrogen, this nitrogen, and this oxygen. And so this is the first peptide bond that is formed in our polypeptide chain. Now, if we repeat step number three and step number four many, many, many times, we essentially can add many of these uh, amino acids onto our growing polypeptide chain. So each time we essentially want to remove that T bar, uh, the T bar group, and then we want to add this molecule here. So for instance, in the next step, here we say repeat many times, but in the next step, we once again mix this molecule with CF3COOH 
our trifluoro, uh, trifluoroacetic acid, a dilute acid, if we mix it with this, that will remove the T-bar group, and then we mix this molecule minus the T-bar group with this amino acid, and that will form a tripeptide. And we essentially continue that until we form that polypeptide that we actually want to form. So let's suppose we followed that step many, many times, and eventually we formed the following polypeptide chain that consists of n number of amino acids. So this is the first amino acid that contains the group R1, and this is the last amino acid that contains the R, the R group Rn. And so this is the amino acid that we began with, and this is the final amino acid that is found on the alpha amino terminal N, while this is the one that is found on the alpha carboxyl terminal N of that polypeptide chain. Now, in the final step, once we actually form this polypeptide chain, what we have to do is, A, we have to break this bond here and detach our polypeptide from this solid surface. And B, we also want to remove this T-bar group. Now, the T-bar group can be simply removed by mixing it with this molecule here. But how do we break this bond here? So the question is, how do we break this bond without breaking any of the peptide bonds in that polypeptide chain? Well, we have to mix it with hydrofluoric acid. If we mix it with HF in the presence of this molecule here, that essentially removes this t bar group and any other uh, uh, any other blocking group found on any of the side chains and we also basically break this bond here without actually breaking any of those peptide bonds. So at the end of the synthesis, the protein is released from the solid surface by adding hydrofluoric acid into our mixture and this breaks the carboxyl ester bond, so this bond, without breaking any of the peptide bonds. And so it leaves those peptide bonds intact. And then we remove our protective groups by using these types of molecules. So for example, trifluoroacetic acid. And at the end, we form our polypeptide that we wanted to form. So this is how we basically form our proteins in a laboratory setting. And we'll see that it's much different in the way that we form proteins in the cells of our body.